All right, guys, uh, welcome to the call. Uh, I want to do a little preface to this and I'm going to bring our guest on. Um, by the way, the reason that I'm recording and, and that I like segment that out is like, I record everything. I record everything and you should too. I promise you, if you're having a bad streak in business, record it. If you're down in the dumps, record it, journal it, remember it, okay? You're going to wish you had. I record everything. And so I'm going to use what we're about to do here um, for other, I'm going to put this in other places. I'm going to be able to come back and have other people watch it. I'm going to be able to watch it. Record everything, guys. Anyway, the reason that I wanted to wait one second is I wanted to give a little preface here. It's frustrating to me when I have seen what this business model can actually do, right? $50,000 a month, $75,000 a month, $100,000 a month. This business model can get you out of debt. It can buy the cars you want to buy. It can put in the swimming pool. It can buy your real estate properties. It can allow you to travel the world. It can allow you to take care of your mom, take care of your dad, donate to your charities. It can do all of those things. And in a very real and intimate way, I have experienced that as I have built my agency. And as I went completely bananas inside of the year of 2020. And we did, we went from eight to 10 K of SEO and one or two, you know, lead gen deals that were pay per lead, maybe one flat fee to July of 2020 doing a hundred K. That's how quickly this changes. And so I get frustrated when I start working with people or I see people that get one deal, one deal. And they're like, cool, I got my car paid for. Awesome. And they're good. Or they take a break and you don't hear from them. It's like they got the deal and then you don't hear from them for 60 days. They're like, oh, I had a little slump. Slump. What a word. Okay. It frustrates me because I've seen what this can do. I've seen the lives that it can change. And for those of you that are in that position where you're, you're like, I know I need to do something. I know I need to change. I know this nine to five is not a safe bet. I thought it was, it's not. And you're sitting there and you're petrified, you're scared and you're, you're playing all these what ifs in your head. I made a post a couple, like a week ago about my uncle passing away and the thought, the thoughts that I had during this time as I was at the funeral, by the way. So it wasn't an uncle that I was like super close with. So I, it's not like so much about that. It was just, I sat there and I was like, life is so short, man. Life is so short. And I remember there's like this, G, this Jim Carrey clip that I've seen. And he talks about his dad and how his dad loved comedy, but his dad was so petrified that he never would leave his job. And then his dad, I think he ended up getting fired. And Jim Carrey basically says, I realized my dad taught me that you can fail at things you don't enjoy doing as well. Just as much as you can fail at things you do enjoy doing that do have upside, that do have that potential. And so anyway, my whole point is saying all this is I've seen this affect my life. I've seen what it did. I, I had to take that jump. It was scary. Trust me. My wife wasn't happy about it. I had to, I had to just do the thing and not get her permission. But when I see people that really get it, when I see people that see this business model and they're like, oh my gosh, they just get it. Just like I did, just like I am right now. I'm just, I'm like, how do I get more properties? How do I build this thing? How do I build this thing? How do I get to the next level, the next level? And when I see people that have that same mentality, it really, really gets me excited. So with that said, I'm going to bring this individual on. This individual, in fact, let me bring him on first. Hang tight. Bro. What's up, man? What's up, dude? Ryan Dalton in the house. Dude, this is the first time we've ever talked. Yeah, this is it. This is the first time. What's up, bro? So where are you at right now? Memphis, Tennessee. You ever been here before? Uh, I I got gas there one time. I'm not going to lie. I was worried I was about to get shot. Well, uh, some parts of Memphis, you might. No, I was in the wrong spot. Trust me, I wasn't in the suburbs. I was like, yo, I got to get out of here. It was sketchy, dude. But I, that's the only time I've been there. So like my view of Tennessee, love it. But that little, like one little sliver, I was like, oh, bro. Yeah, you got to stay on the beaten path uh, in, in some parts. But other than that, it's a good spot, man. 
That's cool. Tennessee's a great spot, man. It's been blowing up with, with all the stuff going on in the world. But anyway, dude, um, I'm really excited to, to have this conversation. And uh, so before I just like gave your intro or tell everyone the, 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 the actual numbers, I wanted to confirm them with you. So in the last, I know it was probably actually more than I even teased, but in the last 30 days, how much have you increased uh, in flat fee deals? $12,000. Okay. A little over. Like, like it's, it, I just, I want to like pause so everyone could hear that. Okay. $12,000. So we got some people over here that have been in this group watching these videos for the last 12 months making nothing. Right. So yeah. I want to like, really like dig into your, your mindset and everything else, uh, uh, like more than anything. Cause the tactical stuff is like, I lay it out. If you guys really want the, 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 the blueprint, the, the fast pass, as somebody called it the other day, it's in digital landlords. I don't want to get into as much of that as I do, like what's going through your head, but you have a really interesting story, bro. And we're going to need to talk more about this off the record because uh, you know why, but tell everyone what you do as much as you can. And like, like what led you, like, yeah, tell everyone what you do, bro. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm a, I wear, I wear a couple hats. Uh, I'm a trained as a lawyer and uh, I work as a project manager for a defense and intelligence company based out of Virginia. And uh, I, I love it. it. It's great. Uh, it's really interesting work because we get to go after some really bad people and we're pretty good at it. Um, but I want to have control of my time, all of it, if I choose to. And this is the path to do it. This is the best business model I've ever come across. It's fun. I'm having a lot of fun doing this. Like, it's not just like, I want to do this thing to make this money. I'm having fun as I go. I wake up excited about it. I go to bed thinking about it. Um, and, and so that's, that's a little bit about my background. And, and so, my so okay. A Co couple questions, if you don't mind me asking. And again, I know some of this might be sensitive, but I'm curious from my perspective, is this a private company or is this a public, like, is this government or private that contracts with the government? Contracts with the government. Yep. Oh, dude. That means you guys like can do stuff because if you, when you work directly for the government, it's like, that's all this red tape. So you guys care nimble. I'm guessing, right? We're, we're a, um, very agile, innovative tech company that solves hard problems for government customers. And it's a lot of fun too. And you spend a fair amount of time in, in some parts of the world that I spend a lot of time in, which is kind of cool. I do. Yeah. I just came back from West Africa not long ago. Before that, I was in East Africa. So I get to go see some cool spots. Uh, what part of West Africa? Were you in Burkina Faso last time? Yeah, I was in Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. <laughs> it's crazy, bro. I'm going, I'm going on uh, November 3rd. 30th back to West Africa. So um, anyone listening, if you guys ever get into a bind and you have a, a big chunk of money that you want to wire Ryan, he could probably get you out of it. If not, then good luck. No, I'm kidding. Um, I'm not going to be able to hook it up. <laughs> dude, that's awesome. So I guess my question is, well, I got a lot of questions, but like what led you to the path of being a, a lawyer? Like did you yeah. do it because you loved it or did you do it because of the money? Uh, no, I did it because I loved it. I specialized in a very specific kind of law that I went to law school to practice a particular kind of law. And I did that for, for years and I loved it. Um, it didn't make a lot of money, but it was meaningful. And so I enjoyed my work. And that's what's cool about your situation is like, you love what you do as your day job. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, like I, you're going to keep doing it. Maybe not, not forever. No, I've got plans to uh, take the, the exit ramp, um, but I can do it on my own terms. And that's the beauty of this is I can keep selling deals because once you know the system, once you know how all the pieces fit together and you have a system that can scale, it's just plug and play, rinse and repeat over and over. And it's a numbers game, right? This BO says, no, good. Let's get another one. This BO says, no, good. Let's get another one. Now I got one that said yes, right? So if I can keep plugging that system in over and over and over and over, I can off ramp on my own terms rather than anyone else tell me when I have to, you know, show up for work or whatever. But today I enjoy it. It's it's interesting work. That's cool. Okay. So I think the biggest thing that everyone's probably thinking, and I'm thinking, is I'm like, okay, dude, it's not like you even have like just a, a random nine to five where you like are security and you can just do stuff while you're at work. Like you have like actual work. That's like, you have to be present. You have to like do a good job. How in the hell 
are you even finding time, dude? Like, like for, I, 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 I mean, I'm a big believer, like you can find time if it's necessary, but like for everyone out there that's listening going, oh, I'm busy. Well, so are you, bro. How are you finding time? I'll say this. I'm an average guy. There's a lot about me that's just totally average, but I have one superpower and it's my ability to focus. I can choose when I want to focus on something and focus on it fully for that time domain and just crunch through work. So that allows me to, you know, have my time management dialed in enough to go after my goals, to go after my dream, right? I've got a dream, I've got a plan and I got to manage my time. I wake up before I go work out, I work on this, right? Get the kids up, eat breakfast with them, go to work, put in all the things I need to get done and then go to this. I just switch back and forth between those two things. Kids go down, I work on this. So uh, I find it something that learn. Is it learn? Like you have the superpower, but I know it was probably cultivated. Like, I think that's so huge. So any, first of all, was it learn? Like that, that skill of like focus or is it something you could just like innately have? No, no, it's, it's cultivated over time. Yeah, through a, a lot of years of struggling with it. I mean, I'm, I have distractions all around me, right? And I have to just choose every day to renew my commitment to focus. And it, time doesn't come back, man. You don't get time back. And I think about it all the time, how you can make another dollar, but you can't get another second back ever. And so if you want the most precious thing in the world, it's your time. And you have to apply your time for the things you want the most because you don't get that back. Dude, that's powerful. Any tips for somebody like me? I'm I'm terrible. Like I go in these spurts where I'm good, but dude, I have to delete Instagram, Facebook. You notice when I get on the lives, I'm like, hold on, let me download the app. I can't even like manage. I have like the news eradicator. I'm terrible. Any tips? Because I think regardless, even if you're somebody like me that I dedicate full time to this, it's still really easy to get distracted and like, oh, I'm working on this. But then like I got a text and I got a call. Any tips for everyone out there of like, how to improve that? I mean, it's like anything that you want to train yourself for, whether it's uh, weightlifting or running or anything that you want to cultivate into a true skill, you have to do it iteratively. And so what I have talked to guys about before is committing to deep work, right? If you say that you want to get good at having superpower focus, set a timer on your phone for 30 minutes and commit to doing nothing but work for 30 minutes. And then when that timer goes off, take a break. You earned it right? And then rinse and repeat and do it again. And eventually your attention span approves. I had to do that. I still have to do that, right? Because I'm, I'm prone to distraction. I want to look at Instagram and Facebook and, you know, do whatever else. Um, but uh, I'm not gonna get closer to my goals and that time doesn't come back. So that's a, that's a strategy I've used. Maybe it works for other people, but it worked for me. Do you have, do you find that there's a certain t amount of time that's key? Like, do you ever do a, an hour or is like 30 minutes the sweet spot? Or is that an example you're using? 30 minutes is a sweet spot for me. I mean, I'll, I'll do 30 minutes of real deep work where I tune out everything and I just crush stuff over and over and over and just get through. I, I got a to-do list and I just cruise through that to-do list and then it's done, right? And then I step back, take a breather and then do it. And I, I can't do it all day. It's impossible to do that all day, right? My best hours are in the morning. Some people it's at night. Whatever your best hours are, like maximize that time because you, you only get it once in a day. It doesn't come back every day. So maximize it. How do you structure your day within this world, right? Like, let's set your, your day job aside. What do you do? What are the things that you spend your time doing right when you wake up? If you have to choose between a bunch of things, what are the things that you prioritize? Um, I wake up and I have uh, guys that I report to, basically. And I have to tell them whether I lay in bed and scroll on my phone. And they ask me. And so that time adds up, it compounds, right? So I get up, jump right out of bed, walk upstairs to my office. And um, it, it depends on whatever's going on in the day. But usually that first hour before I exercise is committed to planning out my day and to making sure that it's structured in a way that I'm going to succeed. I mean, there's some things that are better done at certain hours. You know this, right? You taught it to me. Uh, prospecting business owners don't do it over lunch, right? You know, all the things that you've shown about the right times to do things in this business model. Um, I structure my day that way, right? All the things in flat fee mastery, don't call them uh, on certain days, certain times, right? So I structure my day around succeeding at this primarily. 
Tell me about this whole, so it's like an accountability group or is this just like a bunch of buddies that you guys are like, hey, we're not going to let ourselves slide. Like tell, I, I caught that, bro. I heard that little snippet in there. I'm interested. Yeah. So I've got um, 10 guys uh, meet at my house every two weeks and uh, we're committed to um, um, basically ourselves as projects where most men, if they're asked the question, are you all that you want to be? They're going to answer no. So how do you get there? And it's going to be measurable and has to be done over time. And I knew that I was losing a lot of my time at the beginning of this year to stupid stuff. And I was like, I don't want that. I'm a dad. I'm a husband. I'm now a business owner, right? I've got this business I'm growing. I can't lose all my time to stupid stuff. And so that's one of mine. And everybody's got one. Some guys want to be close to their dad. Some guys want to be, you know, more fit, whatever the thing is, right? We just show up and we're together. And then we've got a service component where we make our city better, right? Where we uh, find people who have a deep need and need it. And so that's how I give back. I think giving back is really important. Uh, I'm extremely grateful for a lot of people that poured into me and gave to me. And so we, we give back and that re-energizes me so that when Monday morning comes around and I'm doing this, I'm re-energized by giving back in some way and can, can jump back into uh, this and my job. Good for you, man. What was the, the, when you heard, first of all, how did you hear about rank and rent? Like, cause this, by the way, for everyone that's listening, this isn't like one of these guys that like has known about this, like, and been doing this for five years. Like, this is a pretty new thing. I, I don't know. Maybe you did hear about it for, but like, to my understanding, like it's been the last couple months. Well, it's, it's longer than that, but it's in the last couple months that I've really gone in seriously, like really, really committed to going after it. Um, but I, I started, man, when um, I came back to Memphis, I moved back here about a year and a half ago. And I said, I'm going to be an entrepreneur and work my way out of this. I'm going to find the best business model on the internet. And so I researched for like three months. I went through maybe hundreds of business models, looking at all of them. And I said, this is the best one. And I don't know how I found art of pre-selling. I really don't. <laughs> I don't remember, but I was just like plugging it in, learning about it. I found art of pre-selling. I was like, whoa, this guy pre-sells this stuff and they pay to have it ranked. It's like, that's pretty rad. I so I, uh, I joined and here we are. So oh, that's so interesting. What was the, I'm curious, what was the, was there a business model that was like a close second or is it like, this is like so far beyond like, cause I'm, I'm curious. Uh, th there wasn't anything that was anywhere near this, honestly. I mean, it, I had certain criteria that I was looking for. It had to be scalable. It had to be repeatable. It had to be um, a low barrier to entry initially, right, to get started. Um, and it had to be digital. And so I wanted to be able to do it concurrently with my job and those are the qualities that I looked for. And nothing came close to this. The biggest thing that this had is scalability, right, where you were able to do this over and over and over. and it, it made money each time. So I love, I'm going to go and cut that clip just two seconds ago where you said it's the best business model on the internet. And I'm going to like make a loop that plays it for like 10 minutes. Cause I've said that till I'm blue in the face and everyone's like, Oh my gosh, here he goes again. But it's like, dude, I get reminded on a daily basis when I talk to other people and their struggles and their business. And I'm like, it's not even close that I was hoping you were going to say that, but I was like, maybe there's another, there's nothing that is like even checks like two or three of the boxes of this one. And that's why I'm like, how do more people not, why do you think more people don't know about this dude? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. Uh, it's, it's a good question. Um, I, I think the thing that I like most about it is that it's, it's a clear win for everyone. Because if you can create a deal that's a clear win for everyone and you can show that value up front, everyone should know about that. If you, as the business owner, are already making money before we even have ink on that contract, you've already shown that this works, right? And if everyone's winning, man, there's no better business model. So true. The, amen, bro. I, I, I did not pay Ryan to say this, but he's basically saying exactly the things I'm saying and I have been in his own way, which is amazing. Do you have one more thing you want to say? Yeah, Nick, Nick didn't pay me to say any of that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never know. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I really believe it. I believe it. It, it, it works. And um, it, it's, it's something that anyone can do. And I mean that. I really mean it.
uh, if you commit your, your, if you're on this call right now and you're wondering like, can I do this, whatever, if you commit yourself to it and quit looking at a thousand other things, if you seriously commit yourself to it and learn it as a craft, like you say, I'm going to get 1% better at this every day. I truly believe absolutely anyone can do it and quickly too. I, I love that you said that because it's so cool for me when I, and I just said this in the, in the preliminary part of this call, I said, if you're looking to whatever you're looking to do, if you're just looking to get out of debt, you can do that with this. It's like the bridge to all these things, but just like you were just saying, like, I'm just, I'm right there with you. I believe anybody that has this process, if they'll just do the work, right? They can be successful. I don't care where you're at. I don't care where you live. I don't care the color of your skin, the language that you speak. It doesn't matter. Like it, it, anybody can do it. And I know that sounds like a far, it kind of sounds like I, I'm, I'm reaching, dude, it is, it, I've seen it, dude. Look at, look at our group. We have people from all over the world. We have men, women, single moms, single dads. We got people that are teachers that are on sabbaticals. Shout out to Will that's doing 10K a month. He's like took a sabbatical. Now he's like, oh, I'm at 10K. Let's, now I'm not going back to teaching. You know what I mean? Anybody could do it. And that's the fun part about this. But I, I love what you said too. And that comes back to this whole recession thing, right? If a recession comes, you better be in a business model where you're actually providing value and it's not some flash in the pan, something or something. Dude, you think if you're going into social media marketing and that a recession, you know what's going to go first? The stuff you can't quantify, right? Oh, we're running, we're, we're paying someone to manage our social media. Cut that. How yeah. can they... How, How's a business owner going to cut this when it's the thing paying the bills? And, and you know, man, a recession means there's going to be more hungry business owners. Dude, did you, were you on the first part of this or were you on mute? Uh, I, was, I was hanging out in the lobby. You had me in the lobby. For okay. Minutes. Sorry. I didn't know if you had, it. dude, I literally at the beginning, I spent 15 minutes talking about a recession and how I'm pumped for a recession. And what are your thoughts on like what this business model is going to do in a recession? Look, I have no idea. I've never been in this business model before. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't have a crystal ball. I know that I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. And I know that when the chips are down, there's going to be hungry business owners. And that's the number one thing that I'm looking for is if you're a hungry business owner, I'll get you the work. I'll make the phone ring because there's going to be niches that people are looking for work regardless, right? Like if, if you're, if you're a masonry contractor and someone's house is literally falling down because their bricks are falling out of their house, right? You're going to get masonry calls. I mean, pick your niche, right? It doesn't concrete, whatever. There's going to be jobs that have to get done. They have to. And there's going to be business owners out there that are hungrier than ever because we're going to maybe be in a tight spot economically, but that's not going to stop a lot of people from making things happen. Dude, I, I was talking to this guy that I consult with that I paid to consult me to get to a million a month, which I've been screaming at everybody to do the same thing of going and finding people that are in the place you want to be. But he said that same thing. He's like, dude, in a recession, people are, they're trying to find ways to make additional revenue, right? The business owners that have been getting all these easy jobs, they're going to be like, where do we get jobs? Where do we get jobs? They're going to, and, and we're going to be that perfect solution for these people. And dude, what the most annoying thing for me as of the last couple of years with this business, when I'm calling around is the business owners that are so apathetic, so not hungry, so fat on the hog. Oh, dude, we got so much work. When they say, you know, jobs, getting jobs isn't my problem. Do you know where I can get any good work? As if they're like some, you know, some unit, some phenom in business. It's like, no, bro, times are too good. Times are too good. And uh, was it was a saying pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, dude, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm excited because I've been sick and tired of not being able to buy real estate without having to look through a thousand deals. I'm excited to just go and take my digital real estate money and plug it into physical real estate and make additional passive income. So yeah, you know, if you're savvy enough, uh, you can make money when the market's going down, when it's going up, it doesn't matter, right? It, you, you just are committed to finding a way to do it. And that's, it's as simple as that, you know? Totally. What, what's your total, if you don't mind sharing, what's your total R, uh, MRR, for anyone that doesn't know, monthly recurring revenue to date for your business that you started this year? 
so I started really February. I had no idea what I was doing. Um, and then later on in the year, I joined Platinum Mastery. And I went from uh, $0 in January to, um, I have some guys on trials right now. So um, this is going to be actually a little bit higher when these trials are over. I probably have another $1,500 or so in trials per month, but I'm at $23,770 uh, for October. <laughs> $23,770 for October. So like, that's what you're, you're going to be making. Is there, and if you get additional deals, there, there, there could be more. Oh, we're still only halfway in the month. There's still deals coming, man. And, and real. So do you have, are all, are those hundred percent lead gen deals or do you have a, some SEO sprinkled in there? I have one SEO guy. Um, it's not even SEO. I just basically run Google ads for him. But I only do that because I have a lead gen deal with him and because he is interested in other lead gen deals. I hate SEO and doing like all that. Some guys are great at it and more power to you if you're good at it. But um, all that stuff, I'm not into lead gen. It, I would say all but one, I think, are uh, lead gen. Are those all flat fee deals? Yeah. Bro, that makes me for so pumped, dude. That's the cleanest business. Like you, you have flat fee. Dude, that's insane, bro. I have 150 bucks a month. That's not true. 150 bucks a month of it is uh, hosting some guy's website. <laughs> you liar. You lied to us, bro. No, I'm kidding. Dude, that's, the rest of that's it. incredible, dude. That is absolutely incredible. And, and real talk, what do you think on this trajectory, now that you got the system in place, now that you've done it so many times, you're, you're, you've got momentum, all these different things. What do you think you're going to be at by January 31st? Oh, sorry, uh, December 31st. Um, some 31st, gosh. Um, I mean, I got a, I got a good team of people helping me. Uh, I got a partner who helps me with some of this stuff. I feel like I've got better. He and I have better momentum now than ever before. Um, I, I don't know, man. Last month it was like, I'm up six grand or seven grand. No, I don't know. Look at my spreadsheet over here. Um, I would like to be at 30 to 35. I mean, that's conservative, I think, based on the last month. I mean, last month was good. Last month was real good. But uh, I, I plan out farther. I've talked to you about this, right? I'm looking at December of 2023 and back planning from there. And my goal is to crush it between now and then. And de December of this year is a short-term goal. And so it's sort of just the, the ride along the way. But 2023 is my, my long-term goal and where I want to be. Where do you think you're going to be? Where, where, like, where, what's your goal by the end of 2023, which is in 15 months? Um, if we're not at 65000 um MRR um I'm gonna be pretty upset with myself yeah uh, I think that's super achievable uh I think that this year I can next year three exit because I made a lot of mistakes up front man there's a lot of stuff I didn't know a lot of stuff I was just sort of like muscling through it on my own you know and then you get the blueprint and the blueprint's like oh I did this thing and I messed it up I did this thing. and that's over those days are behind me and don't get me wrong I'm still gonna make mistakes right I'm human I'm gonna mess stuff up you know but there's a lot of things that are already out of the way that now it's just rinse and repeat. So 65,000 monthly recurring revenue by December 2023 is um, a floor. I, I have to be there. That seems like that's like your that seems to me like your junkie goal. Like if you're not at that, you're going to be looking for a heroin needle. Like that's it. Yeah. I'm guessing your actual goal is probably 100. But that's like I know I'm going to be there at like just looking at your trajectory. That seems very doable. Yeah, I, I think it's very achievable for sure. Have you, ever thought, far. have you ever thought like what, if you didn't have the nine to five, what you could be at? Like, like, cause dude, this is not something I've learned about myself. I've had these thoughts in my head sometimes. I'm like, man, I, I and these are very selfish thoughts, but they're just thoughts that I've had. I'm human. Like, man, if I didn't have, to you know have these other responsibilities and like I, if i like i look at some of these people that are single and don't have kids i'm like dude you have 24 hours in a day but yeah. then my wife goes out of town and she takes the kids and guess what i get the same amount done because i'm dicking around golfing or so part of me is like i feel like when you have other things it makes you be better with your time but i am curious if you've ever thought like man if i went all in where could i be yeah, yeah, I, I'm gonna hit the gas pedal 
I mean, that, that's what I mean about like, I love what I'm doing right now, but I'm looking to off ramp it because I really want to hit the gas pedal and just stomp that gas pedal. Right. And so I see that coming next year as well. That's cool. But then again, I, I think it's cool because you're really doing the gig. But the job is, is simply like, it seems like right at this point, it's way more for the, it's scratching the itch of like purpose and giving back. Like, it's like you're, you're, you can, you're attaching yourself to like a really big cause and I feel like that's more of why you're there right now. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah. And I, I love my coworkers. I mean, I work with some of the coolest people in the world, former FBI, former CIA, former blah, 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 blah. And, and they're cool, man. And they know how to find uh, some, some bad dudes. And uh, it's fun. It's a, it's a hard challenge. I mean, I like hard challenges, right? I like hard problems, solving hard problems. And we use technology to solve some hard problems, to find some bad dudes. And that's pretty fun, but I don't want to do it forever. Do you ever take ride-alongs? <laughs> yeah come on man let's go let's go back to west africa dude i go to west africa and i'm like hanging out at the beach bro i, I i'm not i'm i'm a i love watching that stuff i'm like oh this is so exciting but like i'm a wuss dude i'm like such a wuss i don't even know how i'd be in those situations that's <laughs> well unfortunately those days are behind me I, I used to be more involved in the the direct stuff and now i sit behind a computer and we use technology to find them but uh it, it, it's it's a fun challenge man it's, it's cool to use tech to do some meaningful stuff that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I know there's going to be a, a bunch of questions. I want to respect your time. So I'm going to anybody real quick, as I'm asking him like one or two last questions, I'm going to, if you guys have questions for Ryan, drop them right now, because if we have a lull in questions, I'm just going to end this because I want to respect his time. I know it's valuable. Um, but dude, but back to the people that have not done this, have not decided to jump into this business model. Do you feel like is there like, I, I guess I'm just trying to put, I'm trying to think of any scenario where this wouldn't be a, a, a I, I just, I always think I'm like, why doesn't everybody have a couple of these properties? No matter what your situation is, like everybody should have some, I'm trying to sit here and think like, is there a scenario that like somebody could be like, yeah, it's not a good fit. It's like, I can't think of one. Yeah, I, I can't either. I mean, I, take my, my first one that I ranked, that I really ranked. It was a painting website. Like you say, it's not sexy. It's painting, right? And that property gets a hundred calls a month, on, like fully ranked. I don't run ads on it at all anymore. For my whole life, that is a revenue generating asset. Everyone should have that. Even just one or two, man. Like, I, I don't know why you wouldn't, you know, my, until I retire and after that is a revenue generating asset. And all I got to do is keep it up on the internet and make sure my business owners happy. And I always think about it like this, dude. How cool, how, how, when I go to Africa and I know we're using that cause you've been there, but when I'm on that plane ride, do you know, every time I go over there, I'm like, dude, I wonder if this is, if I'm going to die, I want it to be on a plane in Africa. That's a cool story. Right. No, so, but I'm always, then I'm like, is, is my wife set up? Is she good? Is the kid? And you know, a couple of years ago when I was doing SEO, I remember like thinking, dude, if I die and something weird happens over here, dude, they're, they're fucked, dude. Like I have a policy, I have a one point something million dollar policy. Dude, that's going to be gone in, in a second. But now, like more than anything, I feel peace knowing like, dude, I don't want to die. I'm freaking loving my life. But like if something happened, she literally has all of these assets that are like basically, you know, plugged in. It's not completely 100% automated. I need to, there's a few things I need to tighten up, but she'd be fine. She would not have to work. She would just have to manage this these 50 to hundred assets that are rented out and she and the kids would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, man. It's a different drive when, in a way, when you're a dad or husband or whatever, and you think like, what could go wrong? And I'm going to make sure that everyone's cool. If something goes wrong, right. If I lost my job or if I died or whatever, like they're cool. And that's the case, man. Like it's only happened this year where now I don't have to worry about that. anymore. I've also got a life insurance policy too, man. But like, that won't carry you real far in this world anymore, right? It's got to be something that's going to last a lot longer than when that money runs out. Totally. Okay, man, I'm going to jump into the comments real quick. I see a couple coming through. Let's see what we got here. I'm going to start at the bottom because these are going to be the most relevant to what we're talking about. Okay. Uh, uh, Bruce says, Ryan, did you start as out as a one man show or did you have a partner from the start? I started as a one man show and I found a partner more recently. He's an awesome dude. Uh, shout out to Doug. If you're on the call man watching it. Um, and, uh, it, at some point it becomes challenging to 
keep up with all the pieces, right? And so if you have a division of labor where, you know, you're good at this, I'm good at this, let's keep running, keep this train rolling. Um, what, what's the saying, the, the old adage, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And um, so shout out to Doug and, and uh, Diego, our VA, that uh, has really made it real slick. So That's cool, man. That's cool. I love that. Okay, Denise says, hey, Ryan, just curious, what software are you using to manage phone calls and clients? I've been stuck on software options for the last four days. Yeah, so I have a custom solution set up with Airtable and Twilio. Um, I know that guys use CallRail and LeadSnap and all those. I've never even seen those things. Um, Airtable's worked really, really well for me. They talk to each other. So all my calls get pulled into Airtable and I can see how many calls have come in and they're connected to the business owner. So if anyone ever calls me, I don't get any calls this month. I can say, oh, you got 40. Ties into all my project management, my sales system. Um, all the leads get pulled in there as well. So I can see which leads they got before they're sold. That's the system I've got. I'm happy to share details with anyone that has questions about it. Do do you manage your clients that you're, that you're um, nurturing to the sale inside of a separate CRM? No, I use all the same one. All the same. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that's super helpful. And one thing I want to point out though, Denise, is like, I know that probably hasn't hopefully consumed every second of every day, but like just pick something and do it because I'm guessing that the reason that Ryan is in that is that was pre pro well, I also know you're kind of like a, a very analytical guy too, but um, I'm guessing if you were to jump into lead snap or go high level tomorrow, you'd figure out a way to make it run really smooth. So don't let that stop you, but that is, that is good information. Do whatever makes that train engine move fastest, right? Don't get stuck and like examining a thousand different things. Do what is going to keep the wheels rolling. Love it. Shane Terrell and uh, Shane, Shane, somebody to keep your eye on. He's, he's crushing it. He, he's, he's got a cool story. I don't know if you saw his interview. He was a carpet cleaner and then he, somebody sold him leads and he's like, screw this dude, I'm going to start selling leads. And he's been, he's been smashing. He actually lives in St. George. Uh, well, he, he lives like a 30 minutes from me, but he says, what are the three most important needle moving tasks you do every single day? I have a to-do list um, and I make sure that I get it done if I can. Um, I exercise to make sure my brain is in a place where I'm able to use it all day long. Um, uh, by the way, bro, I think everyone on here figured that when you're looking like a jacked Hulk. For a second, you said tech and I'm like, are you the one that's in there wrestling everyone like Dog the Bounty Hunter, dude? You yeah, buddy. Yeah, no, no, no. I can tell, bro. I can tell you're hitting those weights, dude. That's why, dude, if you guys aren't keeping one of these, just buy the desk. <laughs> Like, I don't know what she, like, this is how I close Zoom calls. Anyway, so exercise. Curls with the girls, baby. Yeah, <laughs> just curls. Uh, baby. We're looking pumped. Uh, Zoom calls? Uh, or sorry, I said Zoom calls. I looked at the word Zoom. You said exercise? I have a to-do list. Uh, I exercise um, and I uh, move the needle every day. I commit myself to making it one, make, making it my business in some way 1% better every day because it compounds over time. It sounds like a silly platitude or a truism, but it's true. Today, I uh, updated all of my finance to make sure that I know exactly how much it, money is moving around each month. And so now I don't worry about it anymore and I can put my mental energy towards something else. So those are the three that work for me. Everyone's got something different, but those three are useful for me. So you go, you work out, you, creating your to-do list and planning is actually one of the three. And then you pick something that is a variable, it changes that you feel like by doing this, it's going to make everything else move forward smoother going forward. Yeah, something that, something that I've not figured out just right where I'm going to improve that thing and then it's out of the way. It's not really like on the to-do list but it's something that I've got sort of this sticky spot that's lingering in the back of my mind in my business somewhere. And I'm like, I'm going to figure out how to solve this. And then now, oh, I solved it. It's 1% better. And I can't do that every day, but I make an effort to it. And over time, I look back and I've got this system that I can scale into. I can you know, add new sites. I can make sure GMBs are up and running. I know what the status is. I have like a, a retention monitor that I look at all my customers and they're like either green, red or uh, yellow status, like little stuff like that, where I just try to make it just a little better so that um, when I look back a year later, it's, uh, you know, 10X what it is now or whatever. Yeah, I love that. Okay, Aaron says, what's your roughly, what's your overall net profit percentage per month? including paying employees, ads, hosting, et cetera? 
Uh, I try to not dip below, um, look at my spreadsheet over here. I try to not go below 25 to 30% as my range. Um, that after what's the everything that's just not on that's okay cool so that's that's all my business operations which includes um all ads it includes um i have like i have six sites of my own up and running right now that have ads running on them um and then i've got a lot of operations costs that i've shifted into my business because of the tax advantages to like my yard and my internet and my phone and like okay. all that stuff which You're is like all that Yes, I'm including all that. And so the real number is actually higher. The real number is probably, you know, in the 40s is my guess. Yeah. And and the cool part about that is like I, some of you guys are probably hearing that and going, oh, I thought it was way higher. It could be if he was going to if he was running a one man show and doing all this stuff himself and didn't have to pay employees and he was just a one man solopreneur, he could be ripping down a lot higher profit. But he's looking at, hey if I can build something that's 40% profit and I can build it 10 times bigger net net, that's a way better deal. Plus he can remove himself from the business. So um, the other cool part about pre-selling deals is your profit is only going to get higher, not lower because as the sites start to rank, the ads come down. So it's not going to go below that, which is dope. And that's happened. That's exactly what's happened where it increases over time by each individual site. So on the whole, the percentage increases and, I put a, a bunch of money back into it every month to grow it. And so if I didn't do that, that number would even be higher. Like I, like this month I have, I'm looking at my budget sheet over here. I've got $1,500 a month set aside for ads, right? Just, just for new sites. Yeah. So, and, know, and, and some people would put that in their pocket, but you're trying to grow this business, which is amazing. Yeah. Good question, Aaron. Um, Mark says, as far as efficiency, are there any systems or automations you put in place that helps you be more productive or save time? Yeah, so so Airtable is the tool that I use. It's got a lot of automations in it. Um, it, it, it is really helpful for me uh, to, to save time. Um, I have um, automated triggers for certain reminders. If someone has a trial that is expiring, I've got a notification that emails directly to me. Hey, it's been eight weeks. Um, you know, set them for this new rate, that kind of thing. Um, I've got uh, all, all the calls that are pulled in there, so I'm not digging through my call program, Twilio, to, to find them. So it, it's stuff like that where... It's designed to connect disparate data sources where all my uh, budgeting and for each month is connected to Airtable based on all my customer information, which comes in via Square. And it all talks via a tool called Integramat. So Integramat, now I think they're called Make Now, makes all those platforms talk together so I can set it and forget it. I plug in a new business owner's information using a form. It all goes in and then I invoice them and Square connects all of it through Airtable to my budgeting spreadsheet on Google Sheets. And that's my system. You know, everyone's got a different one, but that one saves me a lot of time and it's pretty much set it and forget it. That's dope. I love that. Uh, Ron says, how many of your lead gens have GMB? Uh, I will tell you, uh, let's see. I would say, I can't pull this up. Um, I would say probably 60%, 70%. Cool. Some of them still don't. 60 to 70 percent of them yeah and then drew says ryan dalton the human dictionary <laughs> <laughs> dude that's such a good description and a compliment at the same time it's like that's exactly that's exactly what i think in my head i'm like dude you are such an what's cool about you bro is like i take you as this very very analytical guy which usually is a hindrance to people right they're so analytical to a fault but you're also, you've somehow figured out how to just do it. Like, how do you do, this is a question I have and, and we'll, we'll end this, but you have the analytical that they're like, I don't want to pick up the phone because everything's not perfect. And you have the guy like me that's like, oh, that's a, let's just call people. We don't even have a product. And then there's a sweet spot, which is you, which is like, how do you, how do you, because you are analytical, I could tell. How do you put that aside and just, do the stuff that non-analytical people are usually good at? Uh, I mean, I, look, I've got my own hangups. I've got things that slow me down. I've got stuff that, you know, I, I'm an imperfect person, right? And there's things I struggle with. And so I hope that I didn't communicate that, like, I'm just killing it. You I'm haven't said anything. You haven't said anything that's made him say that. It's just 
we can just tell just so you know i'm speaking for drew it's we can just tell by your the way you you speak that you're a very intelligent like analytical person that's what's coming off of but so yeah don't worry about that well i, I just preface that to say that you know i, I have things that i i many things that don't excel at this is something that i have adopted a philosophy of uh perfect is the enemy of good if it's good keep moving forward perfect it as you go put those train down put those train tracks down in front of a speeding train if your train doesn't get moving what good is it right uh so i i think that um for me i'm also a big believer in the philosophy uh that's sort of similarly worded of uh move fast and break things right you just gotta keep moving forward things are going to break on the way you'll fix it as you go and there's systems that i've had to refine as i've went but I'm I'm addicted to momentum. I love momentum. I love screencast. I love live transfers. I love all of it, right? Because it means we're moving forward. That's the piece that you got to get addicted to, right? Let's That's keep cool. moving forward. Yeah, momentum is powerful, man. If you've ever felt it, it's a it's a palpable thing. Um, this is a lot. This is a good one to end in. Um, Luis says that you mentioned eight week trials. Uh, did you mention eight week trials? I did. Yeah. You do an eight week trial? Not not really a trial. I, I do an trial is the wrong word. I do six months contract with a reduced rate for eight weeks. So that's oh, a oh okay. I think he was thinking what you did was an eight weeks of free leads. Yeah, so yeah. just clar yeah, yeah to clar clarify that real quick. Yeah yeah sorry I, I I misspoke. So a better way to say that is, um you know you get business owners that are like well can you work with me on price and you know it's easy to give them a win if you're locking them in for six months right and you say yeah sure you know what. I want to work with you long term. You want to work with me. It's got to start with trust. It's got to work for both of us. I can flex a little bit, man. How's this? I give them a new price. I say I'll shave off whatever that amount is or, or right off the top if you can get started today. And that has worked really, really well for me. Where those first eight weeks, it's reduced by some percentage, 25%, usually is what I do. And um, then it goes to the regular rate. And, and then, yeah. And then after those first eight weeks, they're, the, the contract terms state that going forward after that it's back to the original rate and so it's a six-month contract so okay i love that that's that makes a lot more sense i think i think uh that was th that yeah that makes that makes sense so luis uh are just so i don't know how long you've been in this group you don't want you, you want to get that actual trial period of sending the leads as short and tight as possible because it still needs to be a new, a fun thing for them to get these free leads. If you drag it on too long, it does it, that newness wears off. So the game is how do we get you, how do we get them three to five leads in the shortest period of time and then run the call? So just to clarify that for anybody that uh yeah, Denise says that technique is awesome. Okay. Bro, thank you. Thank I you. really, really appreciate that, dude. Um I love when I get on calls like this, uh, when it's not just like it's people that are like thinking about like taking this to a bigger level, it gets me excited, which I'm always excited about this business model, but it's fun to see people kind of catch the bug and see the vision and also create their own vision of like what this could be. And uh, yeah, I guess, I guess, is there any, anything, if there's not, just tell me like, this isn't like a, I'm not fishing for anything, but is there anything that you would want to say to anyone that is on this call for the first time. I keep going back to that because you're you're so new to this. I know that you're like, well, it's been since February, but it's like, bro, that's like not very long. I like, um, dude, it took me like four years to get to 8K and it was SEO 8K, it was garbage. Like you got there like that. So I guess, is there anything for people that haven't started? Cause I know there's, I personally know a few people on this call that have never done this and they're kind of just checking out the business model. And so anything to those people? Anyone can do it. If you choose to do it, quit looking around, commit to one thing for a year, commit to it for a year. What can, what can go wrong? Like, why not commit to it for one year and it'll change your life. That's what I said I would do in January. I said, I'm going to do this for one year. If it doesn't work, I'm going to do something different. And now I'm never looking back. And so my advice is just give yourself one year. It's not that long. Try it, commit to it fully, do it. Try is the wrong word. Do it. And, um, it, it'll, uh, probably go pretty well for you love it thanks for your time bro mic drop on that one and i'll catch you i'll catch everyone later thanks dude thanks everyone